Hey guys and gals, welcome back to another episode of our Air Cargo Company. So Owl Air right now is uh, looking a little different. We have actually bought a new airplane, so we can uh, we can see that we're flying the DC-3. I'm pretty excited about this aircraft. It should be a lot of fun. So our other aircraft, though, uh, that we do have, we still have the Twin Otter, and that's actually being flown by a pilot that we hired. Uh, so our pilot, um, they're taking the aircraft and uh, and actually doing some some cargo runs for us, which is pretty nice. We we hired a uh, nice new pilot. So we've gotten this old thing here. The reason why we upgraded was because this actually does have more cargo capacity. Now it's not necessarily going to be the most uh, friendly aircraft for us to fly, but we are able to make some more money off of it. And we can always sell it too here. So uh, we're gonna use it and we'll, we'll see how, uh, how everything goes. So notice we are able to carry, with full fuel, you can carry about 4,000 some pounds. Uh, but when you start decreasing the fuel, you can actually load on uh, some more payload. So notice we're at 46.57 right now. So that's almost double what we were getting out of the Twin Otter. So today for our flight, we're actually heading all the way up to White Horse. So here's White Horse. And uh, right now the weather looks pretty crappy. So uh, we'll see how that changes along the way. Hopefully it improves. Um, because this airplane only has a very rudimentary ILS. And there's no way to couple to it. So we're hand flying it. It luckily does have an autopilot. Uh, spoiler alert, I will not be flying any airplane without an autopilot. These these trips are way too long for me to be hand flying the entire time. So, uh, it does have an autopilot, that's what this is over here, and it does have a heading. So, you can't exactly set an altitude, but you can set a pitch angle. So, we'll constantly be climbing and descending the whole time, but we should be able to get some decent time lapses in without completely getting getting out of control. So... Uh, but yeah, other than that, this is our lovely aircraft. Let's get it started. So before starting engines here, uh, battery switch, we're going to make sure that is off. So battery switch, that is off. It's over here. Flight control is free and correct. We know that. Ground power switch, we're going to select that to on. I don't think we have ground power, but that's okay. Fuel gauges, we're going to check all the fuel gauges. Let's go ahead and turn on our battery because I don't have the ground power. There we go. So our fuel gauges... Let's take a look here. So our fuel gauges shows empty on the ox, but full on the mains. Cow flaps, we'll make sure those are open. So cow flaps over here, lads. Spinner here to open. There's our cow flaps. Pedo heat check off, so our pedo heat should be off. We did not turn that on. Lights as required. Uh, they're fine as they are. And then parking brake way under here is set. Fuel selectors left to left main, right to right main. So let's make sure this is on. So left main's here. Right main's here. Perfect. Propeller controls full forward, high RPM. So let's get our props full forward here. Throttles cracked open. So let's crack our throttles open here. And let's see. Probably about that much, I'm thinking. That should work. And then mixture's full rich, so we'll grab a hold of these and we'll move them all the way up. Pedo heaters are still off, imagine that. Fuel booster pumps, we're going to turn them on. So fuel booster pumps. So let's start with the right engine first here. Master ignition on. So master ignition is on. Magnetos, we're going to want it on both. Maybe. There we go. On both. Starter right engine on and then wait. All right. So here's our right engine. So energized engine to the right. We can hear that engine whirling up right now. So that's cool. 
mesh the right engine. So let's go ahead and mesh it. And there she goes. And then primer. Beautiful. All right, so we got one engine running. Now let's do the same thing for the left side. That's pretty cool. There's our engine. All right, let's close up our cargo door. So everything should be closed up now. It is, we're looking pretty good. Now this old girl is gonna go flying. Okay, let's take a look at our checklist. So warm up, uh, hydraulic pressure. Where's our hydraulic pressure even at? I don't know why it's zooming over there. There we go, hydraulic pressure looks good. Fuel boosters are off, oil pressure's checked. So pressure, temperature, fuel pressure, oil pressure, we're good. Well, temperature check. The temperatures are all in the green. We wanna make sure that they're not, uh, you know, in the red. Obviously, if we gave it a little bit of thrust here, start increasing these temps a little bit, help warm it up. Cylinder head temperature check. So our cylinder head temps, carb air cylinder, here we go. Here's our cylinder temps. So cylinder temps need to be in the green. And fuel pressure is also in the green. Magneto check, so we wanna drop 100 RPM each. So, what we need to do here is we need to take a look at our RPM. Right now, about uh, 1200 RPM. Let's go over here, the right side, and it drops one. Go over to the left side, drops 100. Go back here to both. Maybe. Go back here to both. This needle should come back up. Excellent, let me do the same thing on the other side. So the right magneto. So, if you're wondering what this is doing, uh, on the engines there are spark plugs on both sides of the uh, of the engine, basically, uh, without getting super deep into it, okay? There's two sets of spark plugs. We're actively turning off one side of the spark plugs in these engines when we do this. And so we want to see that there is a drop, and there is. Nothing crazy. That means that even if we lose one side of our spark plugs, uh, the other side should be able to keep us flying. So that's pretty important. Instruments, we check. So our instruments, they're all looking good. We'll reset our barrow here. And then taxi, tail wheel unlocked. And then uh, brakes will test. And then parking brakes set, flight controls free and correct, engine, or the instruments check, and then radios on. Okay, so our radios are on. We're gonna squawk something different here. 511 sounds good to me. Uh, the other thing we need to do is take a look at our map here. Because we're going out to the VOR. So this VOR is Elephant VOR, which is 114.0. Uh, so let's change this to 114.0. And we'll swap it onto both of them for now. That way, this should be giving us some some uh, good information. Now, one thing I do have to warn us about is the fact that our compass here matches our heading gyro, which means that if we want to turn our heading gyro one direction, we have to go the opposite direction. So, and that'll become more plain as we go flying. Uh, but that is going to be a pain but we'll figure it out. As long as we kind of know where we're pointed at right now, it makes things very easy, right? So we're pointed north, so if you want to go east, you turn the airplane right. Whether this thing turns left or right, you don't really care. So you know you gotta turn right to go east right now, and left to go west. So let's go ahead, let's kick off our parking brake, and let's taxi it on out of here. 
So it is a tail dragging airplane, which also means that the landings are going to be really, really difficult. Yeah, so the landings, I actually spent a little bit of time uh, when I was getting the type rating for this aircraft uh, in the game here to, uh, to practice the landings. I am nowhere near an expert, so if we go off the runway, at least this airplane's kind of built for it, right? Alrighty, so we're taxiing out here. While we taxi, let's go ahead and run through some more checklists. So taxi checklist, brakes, test is set. Yep, brakes definitely work. Normal takeoff, tailwheel locked, parking brake release, throttles increase gradually, propeller uh, controls full forward, high RPM, cow flaps to trail, landing gear up, mixture full rich and carburetor, air control off, fuel boost pumps on. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get some of this stuff set up here. So boost pumps are already on. Another thing that it doesn't really talk about is putting on the pedo. So we're gonna put on the pedo, we'll turn on our, our uh, heaters as well, our de-ice, our lights, and inverters, carburetor de-icing. I think that's just about it for the switches that we need. The position that this has you in puts that window so like right in your way. Oh, but the window does open. That's kind of cool. It's cold out, but uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so I have very little time in this aircraft, so it'll be kind of cool to actually experience all this stuff. I right, here's only 2.6. The wind was favoring it. So we'll go ahead and depart off. Now on the takeoff roll, we have to be very careful as well. Because this airplane, uh, it will kind of pitch you up and kill you. Alright, here we go. So you want to be very gradual with the thrust. Just let the airspeed start to build. Then you definitely need some forward pressure on the yoke. Hopefully we'll get up to a speed now where we'll start rolling forward on that front on the front two wheels here. There we go. Rolling forward, we don't want to do too much, right? So let's give her some thrust here, and we'll take her right off. So that's alright, we kinda went off the runway just a little bit, but we were able to get off the ground before we uh, we actually went off. So I'm okay with that. Like I said, it is difficult. It's not easy. All right, so first things first, uh, let's keep climbing up here and we're gonna start turning out towards our VOR. So luckily this is pointing directly to our VOR that we're going to. We're climbing all the way up to 18,000 feet here. It's nice doing this. Uh, outside of, uh, of the clouds here, at least to start with. It'll be difficult later on. Okay. So next thing we want to do is we want to set this uh, to our desired heading. So our desired heading right now looks to be something like... 20... One five, something like that. So twenty one or two fifteen, somewhere around there. Okay, so we can set that. We also want to set our pitch. So our pitch currently, we'll set just like that, and then let's go ahead. Let's turn on our gyro pilot. We'll do our heading hold, and it should actually now hold our heading. 
we want to turn a little bit right though. So let's turn it right just a hair. And then we're climbing just fine right now, but we could probably climb a little bit more. So we need to actually go, we need to move this pitch downwards. So notice we're climbing now. We're gonna move this up. That shows kind of our wing. All right, we're still looking okay. Now we are going direct to this VOR. We could tune it. I don't know if we'll actually be able to hear it or not. Uh, let's see. There we go. So we're tuning it. And let's spin this. So we need to go right. So we need to spin this to the left. <laughs> How these people did this back then is, is insane, right? So in order for us to go right, we need to spin this to the left. Again, we gotta think about it right now. We are heading west, well, southwest right now. So if we wanna go further west, we need to go to the right. So that means we gotta spin this to the left. And that'll make us go right. Trust me, it makes tons of sense. All right. So pitch, we're still doing good. We'll increase this a little bit. Let's double check and, and make sure that this is the right frequency. So 114.0. And what we also want to do is we want to load up our Navigraph. The next thing I want to do too is we probably want to get our cow flaps out of trail. That way we keep our cylinder head temps from getting too hot or cold. Oil's up, doing okay for now. We can probably pull this back just a hair. Here we go. And then we'll pull back our propeller. Keep it in the green, so about 25 on both. We're still in the green there, so that's good. And then our climb, we're actually looking pretty good from here too. So, we're actually tracking this pretty darn well, surprisingly. Uh, let's see, are we going the right place? We are. Excellent. I don't know why it's still asking me to load it. It's the same thing. That's cool. Okay. So, elephant is, let's see. It could be dash dash. No, no, it's going to be dot, 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 dash, dot. There it is. So we know that we're going to the right place. Oh, oops, I'm looking at the wrong one. Dot, 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 dash, dot. Perfect. So Sisters Island is where we're going. And it looks like we're actually doing pretty darn good. So we'll follow that line. And that's how we're going to fly it. I do like the ADF stuff. In fact, we could actually program in the ADF as well. Elephant, so Sisters Island is 391. So let's put 391 in here. We can stop listening to this. And now we can tune the ADF. Look at that, the ADF's taking us right to it. So you tune the ADF and you can actually hear it, which is great. DME, I, I don't... I think we have any DME. I have not been able to find DME anywhere. So maybe uh, maybe with us doing all this, we'll eventually find DME, but I don't see anything. Yep, just a little bit to the right. So that means we need to spin this left. Well, like two degrees to the right. The next VOR that we're going to need so, luckily I think we're over all the mountains out here. The next VR that we're going to need will be White Horse, which will be 1660. So let's set in here 1660. There we go. That will be White Horse. So that's pretty cool, huh? 
our airplane out here, cruising along. Probably turn off our landing lights. So we'll go, we'll turn it off. But it is certainly cool. Turn off our landing lights, position lights will stay on, pitot heaters are on, prop de ice is on. Let's make sure we didn't miss anything else. Okay, so let's take a look and see. So we're getting pretty close. Then we're going to turn on to a heading of 341. So 341 is going to be the heading. If we want to come from Whitehorse, uh, it would actually be a heading of, should say in here, hypothetically. I think it's like 160 something. I don't really want to do the math in my head. 163. So 163 and then 343 up there as we get a little bit over halfway. So we will depart off of this on a 341 heading and then we'll try to uh, drag the tail of our, of our uh, needle. Although, probably not close enough to pick up White Horse, but the game will probably let you pick up White Horse. So we're still climbing just fine. Uh, we've passed through 10,000 feet just now. And we're going to try to go up to 18,000. Once we get up to altitude, we'll put it into a cruise configuration. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I do like that we can o open up the windows. I wish we could open up this door, though, and walk to the back. Caution, high voltage. Then open a battery card is attached. Roger that. What is this? Some sort of communications. Probably our DME back here. Hydraulic system fills level with landing gear extended. Flaps up hydraulic fluid. Interesting. All right, so we're at 14,000 feet now. We're still climbing like crazy. And uh, we're getting closer to our VOR. So down beneath us, there's actually going to be an island out there. That might be the island there. And that'll be Sisters Island. Yeah, I think that is. That's where the VOR is located at. It's a beautiful airplane, though. I do like flying these older aircraft. And I definitely want to get proficient with it, that's for sure. Okay, so there's 15,000. Let's take a look at our map. Now, how would we do this if we didn't have a moving map? We didn't have an iPad and the aircraft with us. Well, without DME, it's a little difficult. However, if you keep tracking this, eventually, this is going to start turning as you get closer until you fly right over it, at which point uh, you'll be in that area of confusion or area of ambiguity, however you want to talk about it. So this thing will actually start flipping around. Now, because we can cheat, though, what we're going to do is once we get a little bit closer and we get to that area, I'm going to immediately turn us uh, to the north on a heading of 341, and then we'll make minor adjustments the rest of the way. That's how I would fly in the real world, at least, just because I would not want to overfly this, turn back in, and then head up. So, kind of do like a smart turn once we get into our area here which will be soon and luckily at 18,000 feet we will be above the clouds so there's 16,000 feet and we can probably turn off our airframe de-icer 
in our props. And we're getting closer. Now it's just gonna start moving. And let's go ahead and let's start. Oops, we need to turn to the right. So 341 is where we need to be now. Cool. And the needle's flipping. All right, there's 18,000 feet. So what we can also do we can actually lighten this up a little bit. It looks like we're descending in the turn anyways, for whatever reason. There we go. Looks like it was too much of a turn. So now we want to be on a 341 heading. So it says that the needle is offset a little bit. Let's flop on over here. So that way one is pointing to and one is pointing away, hypothetically. So now what we need to do is we need to follow the bigger needle. And we're going to need to go, so see how the needle's off to the right side here? We need to pull it to the left because we're going away. So let's start turning. Now uh, we need to start uh, pitching down here real quick. We want to hold 18,000. bit more okay so we'll start descending here and we want to start pulling it by going to the left so let's put this at like a 330 heading something like that and we'll see if that starts kind of working it in we might even need to go about a 320 to really get it back on our course here That should make sense here. This should start to drag over. We'll keep an eye on it. So, all right, guys. Uh, with that, I will catch you all prior to the descent. So we're just checking over a few things right now. Uh, notice that we were descending a little bit, so we came back in here and we started to increase our pitch. We are getting pretty close. Uh, I wouldn't say like we are super close, but we are over uh, over halfway. Only about 59 more miles. I wanted to make sure that we adjusted our course as well. We've also uh, swapped over. To both of them on 16.6, which is 
what White Horse should be. We can also tune in 329 for the uh, NDB. 329 for the NDB. Now the NDB should be pointing right at it. We have a heck of a win from the left, so that's why we are crabbing into it so aggressively. We're going to have to even crab into it more, it looks like. So we need to go about 325-ish, and that'll kind of get us back on course here. However, the terrain and everything looks amazing outside. I have not flown up here, so this is kind of the first time heading out in this direction. And it is certainly, certainly beautiful. I do have it set to real world weather as well as uh, real world time, so this is apparently what's going on right now. We'll get ourselves all leveled off here again. There we have it. So let's go ahead while we're here and let's check the weather in Whitehorse. So if I select it, it says still freezing drizzle with three statute miles. So uh, this is going to be a little difficult here. I'm hoping that it is better than this. But we will try to fly the ILS in there on runway 32. And we'll see what we can do from there. So I'm going to go ahead and start kind of setting in the 109.5. It's going to be a tough ILS if the weather is truly that bad. So 109.5, freezing drizzle, we don't like that, but it is what it is. Adjust our pitch again here a little bit since we're climbing. And it's got some uh, decently long runways. And we shouldn't have much of a win there either. So we've got all that stuff set. I'm going to just be uh, slowly adjusting this. And uh, we'll get another time lapse in here. And then I'll catch you guys this time for real at the top of the descent. So, we're here, we're actually getting pretty close to our airport now, to our destination. Let's take a look at everything. So, we're within range. We're going to need to start kind of going on a uh, more northerly heading. And for only 3-2 left there, it's going to be a 321 intercept. So 321 is what we're looking for. And 109... Point five is what we have up here as well so that's excellent now we don't see the airport anywhere so we're going to kind of cheat with our iPad right so you know in the real world we could obviously get radar vectors uh, this will be our radar vectors for today Let's load up the ILS to runway 32. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. NDBs, ILS, Yankee, Zulu. Okay. Let's go with Yankee then. And we see ourselves up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start kind of powering back here. And we're going to start descending. We also need to start moving our heading. You start going to the right here to about a I don't know we got 120 heading here to start with 
it'll be a lot less than that. It'll probably be something like a zero five zero zero four zero, and we'll start coming down. So at Uktav, which is our final approach fix, we want to be at fifty five hundred feet. So we're high. So we'll keep us coming down. We can hear propellers out there kind of flapping in the wind. That's okay. We're not redlining it yet. So we'll kind of extend our base here. Kind of turn it into like a downwind. And then we'll enter here and we'll try to hook up with Uktav. And then descend via it. Uh, so 200 feet is going to be on the DA. I think it's already set for that. It looks to be that way. Yep, 200 feet selected. Looks like we're in a pappy. And uh, at least it has some runway lighting systems there. 12,000. And let's go ahead and start turning inbound. We should be able to make these fixes here. We're at 7,000 feet, so we're actually looking okay. And then 5,500 is where we're trying to go. There's 270. And we'll be on a heading of 321 inbound. Let's swap these over. And we should start getting some information down here. And what I'll do is I'll actually kick off our gyro pilot as we get closer. And then we'll fly this approach in. See what we can do here. No promises. All right, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to go ahead and start extending our gear. Localizer coming through. Glide slopes here as well. We need to start turning towards it, though. We have a heading of uh, 321. There we go. Glide slopes in here. Make sure that all of these things are on. So we don't get any ice. All right, so we're watching the bottom corner down here. We're slowly trying to track everything in. We have a glide slope here, too. We're trying to hold on to. All right, we're slightly below. Correct that a little bit. Still below. Still correcting. Make sure we don't crash into a mountain here. Still correcting. Now, in the real world, obviously, you'd go miss if you went full-scale deflection. We're not in the real world. So I'm going to do my best here to get us back on. As long as we can arrest our descent, which we've done. Get us right back to where we need to be, wings level. Let's see if we can track it in here. Get 321 here on the heading. That'll help us out a lot. We're still turning towards the localizer here. Localizer's coming in. We're going to start decreasing the thrust. You see that localizer coming in. Get the scan going on everything if we can. Don't want to bring it in too much here. So 327. 321. Okay. There's 321. Stop the turns here. Damn it, I'm looking at it backwards again. And we're slightly below the glide slope. Just slightly. Okay, actually, we're more than slightly below the glide slope. But as long as we kind of hold it here, hold wings level, we level it off. Should be able to get the glide slope back in. These are no joke approaches, that's for sure. Now I'm still low, so we'll kind of pitch up just a little bit. Keep following this down here. But we're looking at everything right now. We gotta keep an eye on our airspeed too. Gotta keep an eye on our altitude. We don't wanna drop too much here. Should be capturing the glass up. I see it's moving. Keep turning back this way. Don't wanna to turn too much to the right. A little fast. Start getting ourselves all configured here. Okay, we're getting slightly off course here again. Just keep coming back in. Here we go. Wait, am I turning here? 
Not the right way, apparently. We're still really far out. I'm still trying to stay on the approach. There we go. This thing's like a window wiper. When it comes in, it's fast. Okay, climbing. Slightly. This is tougher than it looks, let me tell you. here. We are getting closer to the runway. Soon, I'm sure, we'll look outside and we'll see something. But, I mean, it, it would help if I'm actually on the course. I am slightly above the glide slope, though. So I need to start bringing her down here just a little bit. I see houses. That's a good sign. That is a good sign. No shot. <laughs> there is a runway out here. Holy crap. Should have went missed several times there, and obviously in the real world you would. But, you gotta learn how to do this somehow. The only way to do it is to actually jump in the game and accomplish the flight, so. Here we are. So there's our runway. Thank God we saw it when we did. I knew we were getting close because it got really sensitive. It definitely feels a little windy out here. landing be very gentle on the controls here okay whoo we made it all right let's see how the heck we get off of here uh we'll pull right over here to the uh to the Terminal. We'll drop it off there. Okay. We found our we found our place. Parking over here by this building. Difficult to see with all the snow. trucks driving out here. Probably waiting to pick up the cargo. Gotta drop off all these flowers. We'll park it right here. Set that parking brake. And let's uh, make sure that some of these things are off. Turn off all those. Let's go ahead. Let's pull these back. Alrighty. There we go. So the aircraft is all shut down. We're going to open up our doors back there. Now, they can come and grab all these flowers that we have back here and the non-hazardous material that we have as well. Okay, so if we take a look at our Air Hauler 2 here, we can see that we delivered off our, uh, our flowers and we have 652000 That's because I took out a loan earlier to buy this aircraft. Um, the DC-3 was a little over $3 million, so we took out a $3 million loan because it was cheaper than leasing the aircraft. I have somebody else flying right now as well. You can see that they're actually... Uh, Owen Musto is the guy's name. He's flying from uh, Stewart back to Juneau. 
and he has a bunch of uh, mail on board. And then from there, he has another flight. He'll actually be up here uh, into White Horse with us. So yeah, so from here, what we'll do is we'll pick up some more cargo and we'll we'll keep rolling from there. Probably getting better and better with this uh, with this DC three and probably forget how to fly real airplanes and uh but yeah so guys thanks for hanging out thanks for uh thanks for witnessing that amazing approach and until next time take care guys